Hello, beloved of the Lord. It's Bev Potter. It's Sunday, March 10th, 2019. I wanted to share with you today some things the Lord has been showing me concerning the image of the beast. So what I want to start with is uh, to share a quick flash vision that the Lord gave me last week, uh, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, I was just contemplating everything that's going on over in the ICE district and um, Obama coming to town and things like that. And I suddenly had a, just a flash vision where I saw the arena. I pictured the arena and it came to life. It it moved. It was a subtle movement. It just kind of like a sleeping beast, uh, just almost just adjusted itself, shifted a little bit and and settled back down, but definitely the movement of something alive. And as soon as I saw that, I was taken uh, to Revelation 13, where it speaks about the image of the beast. So I would like to go to those verses and just do a quick little Bible study on a couple of the words that we find in those in those verses. All right, so hang on. All right, so here we are, uh, Revelation 13, 14. Uh, I just want to look at a section of that verse, and then I want to look at Revelation 13, 15. All right, so uh, this is speaking of uh, the second beast, and it is speaking to them. Uh, okay, so them with the star there, that refers to, see at the bottom, it says, them that dwell on the earth. Now, I just want to throw in a quick comment here. I used to believe, or when I would read that, I would think uh, that it was talking about everyone who dwelt on the earth. And then uh, as I was looking into this uh, just recently in the, over the last week, um, it came to me that it's, uh, okay, the beast has been revealing himself to those who want to, to know and those who would listen to him. Uh, so that wouldn't be your average person. That wouldn't be uh, a Christian. Okay. Um, that would be the Luciferians, those who have been seeking occult knowledge. Um, they dwell on the earth, um, but this has been done behind the scenes. And that's basically what I felt the Lord was was saying, that uh, this part that I was like expecting to be a future event has actually happened. Okay, so and that is what they are doing with the building of CERN, um, the D-Wave computer and all that technology. All right, so let's go back and just read uh, this section of the verse. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image. That's G1504 in the Strong's, an image to the beast. Okay, and 1315. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause. Okay, it's, it has power to cause uh, something to happen that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. All right. So I want to look at two of these words. I want to look at image, G1504, and I want to look at that word life, G4151. All right. So G1504, according to Strong's, means a likeness, i.e. literally a statue or profile or figuratively Okay, it does not need to be a literal likeness. Figuratively, it's a representation, a resemblance, okay, an image. So how does Satan want to represent himself? He wants to represent himself as God. He wants to um, appear to be all-knowing, all-seeing all-powerful. Uh, his character would be controlling and Hitler-like, uh, hating God and those who belong to God. It would come down to uh, worship me or die. And his personality or um, 
character also would be represented. Um, he he uh, would work in a way that was subtle, sly, seductive, and charismatic. All right, he would not uh, come out, you know, basically uh, as a super scary thing right away, uh, saying, hey, you know, I'm the boogeyman, let's go to hell. Um, that is not his way. So when this beast system becomes live, I believe the change will be subtle, sly, seductive, and charismatic. So I believe that the image is the technological um, system that has been built by man, okay, that they should make an image. This is what man has done, made an image, uh, a way for Satan to express himself on the earth and portray himself. So, and this would involve uh, all the various aspects of the technology, the internet of things. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that after, but I want to move on now to this word where in 13, verse 13, 15, it says, and he had power to give life, G4151. So I've made some study notes here. And uh, I don't want to read through the entire thing, but I just, I want to have it here. If you feel uh, to pause it and read through that, that's great. I just want to share a couple of notes that I took from that. Now these, this is partial. You can go look up that number, that Strong's number, G4151 yourself. And there's, there's much more if you're interested in doing that. This is what I want to emphasize from those previous notes. Note, okay, that giving life, that life, never is referred to as a depersonalized force. So we are not talking about electricity throwing, flowing through something um, like a robot or one of the kids' toys that makes it move around, okay? It's never referred to as a depersonalized force. It is. So the system, the image, is given a spirit. It's used of demons or evil spirits. It can also be used of the Holy Spirit or the human spirit, but that's not what we're talking about here. So what it is saying here is that the beast had the power to give a spirit unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This beast system, the whole system, um, if you want to picture it like an octopus, you can picture like the, maybe the D wave computer and CERN at, at, as the, like the head and, um, and then all the tentacles coming out. And then at the end of the tentacles, uh, and those tentacles would be invisible because they would be the, um, radio waves and stuff going through the air, but they would be empowering these construction, these, um, well, these, okay, the arena, okay, and other buildings and um, other things constructed by man that are linked to this internet system. And this spirit, this actual spirit of a demon, okay, so we'll just say Satan, is going to possess the system. And it's going to bring every part of the system to life. And that is what I saw in my flash vision. Was this arena literally becoming live? So my understanding is that the image of the beast is a man-made system capable of expressing the nature of the beast. 
So what I believe the Lord showed me this week is that the arena, the arena in Edmonton, Rogers Place, the coiled serpent, is literally the image of the beast, a snake. And it's, but it's part of this wider system, which is the uh, internet, uh, internet of things, uh, technology that uh, is like the, the beast system. All right, so let's look at the components of this technology. We've got the D-Wave quantum interdimensional computer. It's also AI. It has been AI since 2015. And they've been talking about uh, at some point that it might become sentient. All right, so we've been having hints on this for years now. Uh, we're talking about CERN. We're talking about G5, uh, various other AI programs, etc. They have also announced, I believe it was Anthony Patch announced that they now have developed the interface technology to link the quantum computer system. Our regular computers are not quantum computers, but they have now developed the technology to link our non-quantum computers to the quantum computer, which means our computers become part of the quantum system and everything else, all the chips that are in the various things that we purchase and have in our homes. And they have also developed the interface technology to link our brains to the system. I came across an interesting uh, interview with Elon Musk where he basically outlines the whole uh, beast strategy. Now, um, he used to be known for, you know, trying to give warnings about AI and um, being super concerned. And he's, he's uh, done a flip on that. And he's now essentially selling this whole beast system technology, um, becoming part of the singularity idea. Uh, but it's, it's very subtle. But uh, I, I'll go into that in a different video. But just to say that this information is out there uh, for anyone who wants to find it. So when I was looking into um, the Ice District and Rogers Place, I looked at some of the upcoming events, and this one caught my eye. Uh, for some reason, Michelle Obama is coming to Edmonton. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but what I want to point out is that, okay, this is your standard uh, poster that you see on all the ads for this event, okay? So uh, normally it says uh, becoming and then uh, an intimate conversation with Michelle Obama or something to that effect. But only in Edmonton, and I'll show you a couple of the other ones, do you see this, what? Michelle Obama becoming live, not becoming, which is the title of her book, um, but becoming live. And not only is it on the official Rogers Place um, website, it is also on the official ICE District website. Same poster, and down here, what? Michelle Obama becoming live. Friday, March 22nd, 2019. All right, so um, here we are. This is the Toronto venue, the Scotiabank Arena. And again, you have the same, um, the same poster. But here, this is what you normally see. This is what it's normally called, just becoming an intimate evening or an intimate conversation with Michelle Obama. Again, here's the official site, but this is the uh, Vancouver venue, Rogers Arena. And here's what it is, becoming an intimate conversation with Michelle Obama. And this is Montreal. I had to go to a newspaper article to find um, the name of the event. And yeah, 
So here it is here for Montreal. So those are the, those are the four locations in Canada where Michelle Obama is coming. But only in Edmonton do we see this becoming live. I believe that this is an announcement um, of the beast, basically, that this system is becoming live. I do not know if it's stating that it's going to become live on that particular day or that it is already in the process of becoming live. But I do feel that that's something to pay attention to. The event is organized by Live Nation and the publisher of um, Obama's book is called Crown Publishing. So I was look, thinking about Obama's book. It's called Becoming. It's supposed to be a memoir and it has some aspects of that. But that word becoming is not a word uh, about looking behind. That's a word about looking ahead into the future. And this morning, the word manifesto came to me. Now, I haven't read the book, but even just the title of the book, I believe, is actually a manifesto, a statement of intent. Intent to become something else. Now, what else could that be? So I came across this post and I noticed in a different article, you know, I believe it's uh, Trump that is called POTUS, P capitals, all capital letters, P-O-T-U-S. In this other article that I looked at, it referred to Michelle Obama as FLOTUS, F-L-O-T-U-S, the same except the, two, the first letter is changed to F-L, uh, all capitals. And I wondered what the meaning of that was. This post here indicates that Hillary will not run in 2020. An interesting side note, um, a friend of mine who's very observant was watching the post-election coverage. And she told me that she saw Hillary Clinton walk over to Michelle Obama, put her hands together in prayer form, and bow before her. So I, I believe that Hillary will not be running in 2020. And the last thing I want to show you uh, concerning Michelle Obama, this is her hashtag for the book tour. I would like you to notice those words. Hashtag I am becoming. Notice the I and the A in am are both capitalized. That is actually the name of God. He is the I am. What is this hashtag saying? What is Michelle Obama becoming? In Maurice Sklar's heavenly courtroom experience, um, a vision from the courtroom of heaven, uh, which you can find online, I will try to link it below, uh, he indicated that the time for Satan's takeover had been set. He was not allowed to share that timing, but Satan was there, and he, he would then know the timing himself. So, we are approaching the time of Satan's takeover, the Satan's time to rule the earth. But this is not all bad news. God has a wonderful, wonderful plan. He has prepared certain people to carry his glory, to carry his authority, and to come and bring his kingdom on this earth in the midst of Satan setting up his own kingdom. We are talking here about the Revelation 12 man-child. We also know from Revelation 12 that the woman that gave birth to the man-child is taken to a place and kept in safety for the three and a half years of Satan's time, time to rule. 
Now, some of the offspring of the women, woman, uh, are um, under attack by the enemy and will lose their lives. But the Lord promises that those who trust in him will be kept safe. And even if our bodies are killed, if we are in the Lord Jesus, if we belong to him, it is actually a wonderful a blessing to us because we come to the end of our battle and we enter in to glory with him. So that is not something to be feared. The only thing that we need to remember is that under no circumstances are we ever to worship the beast or take the mark of the beast. And one more encouraging thing is that there is a time limit on this. Once this starts, the enemy only has three and a half years. Okay? So, the Lord is bringing us light, bringing us uh, truth, making us aware of the times we're in, not to be fearful, but to take this time to press into him, to put our hope in him, to give our lives to him, to repent of everything, um, you know, to ask him to bring to light every, every way that we are not aligned with his will and to repent and allow him to come and wash us clean and take us into that safe place in his heart where he wants to keep us and, and protect us uh, no matter what comes. So, Father, thank you for helping us to know the times that we are in. Thank you for your great grace towards us. Thank you that this is being done out of your mercy for those people on earth who cannot um, seem to believe or put their faith or submit their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time where their eyes will be opened and they will see light and darkness and they will be able to make that choice and to spend all of eternity with you in glory. Thank you, Father, for your great plans in this. And I just pray that you would prepare everyone's heart, all of our hearts, Lord, and um, that you would give us that attitude that our lives do not belong to us. So no matter what happens to us, it does not matter. All that matters is that we are with you in the end. And glory, glory to your name. I pray for the salvation of millions of souls. I know that that is what you're going to do. Thank you, Father, for your great grace. And at the end of this, it will be over and your kingdom will be all that's left on this earth. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Glory to your name, Father. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.